Question 1 from the 2010 Higher Maths Paper 2. Here we go. Three dimensional geometry, finding vectors, finding an angle. Now, what's the first part? State the coordinates. Notice it just says state the coordinates of M and N, which means you don't actually need any justification for it. So, M first of all. Well, where is M? It said that M was the midpoint, which means that it's halfway between O and R. How far is that? Well, that's two back, so that's one back. So it means you go along none, one back, and none up. Along none, one back, and zero up. N. The question said that UN was a third of UQ. Well, the other way around, that means that this is, if that part's one third, this will be two thirds. But there's three parts altogether, so it's two up. Four along. Two back, two up. Four, two, two, and there's your marks. Now, part B. Express VM and VN in component form, and that's all it says for two marks. It'll just be one mark for each of the two results, no matter how you derive it. So you could just do it by inspection. You need to know what V is first of all, of course. V would be this vertex here, which on this plane would be none along, the full two back and the full three up. None along, two back, three up. And then you can see how can you get from V to M, because that's all it means. What moves required starting at point V to arrive at point M? How many along, how many back and how many up? Well, you're starting at zero and you're finishing at zero, so that's none along. So you're starting at 2, but you're finishing at 1, so you must have gone 1 back. So you're starting at 3 and finishing at 0, so you must have gone 3 down, and that does it. Similarly for this one. How do you get from V to N? Well, starting at V, from 0 to 4 is 4 along. From 2 to 2 is none back. And from 3 to 2 is 1 down. But you'd probably be too scared to do that, so you'd go through this whole routine and say... Well, that's M minus V, so that's 0, 1, 0, minus 0, 2, 3, which is nothing take away nothing, 1 take away 2, nothing take away 3, which is, of course, the same thing. Because all you're doing is explicitly stating the subtractions you just did naturally. N minus V. N is 4, 2, 2. V is 0, 2, 3. Now that I've written them all out, although there they are staring me in the face. Now we can do the subtractions, which again, equally were just as obvious. 4 take away 0 is 4, 2 take away 2 is 0, 2 take away 3 is negative 1, and there's the same result. But you're probably happy, happier doing that, because that's what you always did. But there's no need. You could just state those two results. Part C. Calculate the size of angle M, V, N for five marks. Well, that means I want the vectors that radiate away. I want Vm and Vn, and that's precisely what I've got. And then you can either just jump straight in with the cosine of the angle, or write out the scalar product. The scalar product of Vm and Vn would be the magnitude of Vm times the magnitude of Vn times the cosine of the angle between them, which is the angle M, V, N. No marks. First mark comes for writing the cosine part down. The cosine of M, V, N would be the scalar product. So that would mean evaluating the scalar product the component way divided by the magnitudes. Now there's two ways you could set this out. You could either, at the side, work out the three parts, the scalar product, the magnitude of one, and the magnitude of the other, and then put them back into this, or just plop it all down in one. So vm dot vn means multiplying the corresponding components and adding them together to get a single number. It's the scalar product. A scalar is a single number. You don't multiply them together and leave them as a vector. So that would be the x components, so that's nothing times 4. The y components, negative 1 times 0. 
the z components negative 3 times negative 1 all to be divided by now what are the magnitudes well the magnitude will just be pythagoras in three dimensions so it's the square root of squared the three parts zero squared and you can even just write one squared and three squared because square and a negative is the same result but i'll put it down negative one squared negative three squared multiplied by same with this square and add the components I'll just tidy it up to get the three parts. Notice this top part only comes to three because there's a zero times a zero times. So the top of it's three. This part, you've got a nine and a one, which is 10. So that's root 10. And this one, you've got a 16 and a one, that's 17. So the angle you're looking for, angle MVN, will be the inverse cos of this thing. Now don't work that out as a decimal and pop that in. Just do inverse cos of it. In fact, you don't even need to type in root 10 times root 17 because the product of the square roots will simply be the square root of the product. Press the buttons and you get 76.697 and so on. So the angle would be, take it to one decimal place, 76.7 degrees for angle MVN. And the five marks for this are quite clear. <coughs> they go one for the formula, then one for the scalar product, one for this length, one for that length, and then finally one for the final answer. Now, there is another technique you could have used. You probably wouldn't, but it's allowed in the marking scheme, and so it should be because it wasn't excluded. And that was to say, well, I'm working at an angle. An angle must lie between two lines that so must lie in a plane, it must belong to a flat triangle, and it does. It belongs to the triangle VMN. If I want this angle in here, then just using that planar triangle, I can either use the sine rule or the cosine rule. That should be equally valid. After all, I already know the lengths of those two sides, or I know the components of the vectors of those sides which will give me those lengths. All I'd have to do is work out MN. And you just get that direct from the coordinates. Going from the final side, m to n, that would be nothing to 4 is 4, 1 to 2 is 1, 0 to 2 is 2, and then I can get the three sides of this triangle from the lengths of those vectors. Maybe put a bit of working down, of course, so that the length of vm would be the square root of, I know I've done it before, 0 plus negative 1 squared plus negative 3 squared, so it's the square root of 9 and 1, which is 10. The length of Vn is the square root of the squares of the components, 4 squared, 0 squared, negative 1 squared, 16 and 1 is 17. And the length of Mn is the square root of 4 squared, 1 squared and 2 squared. So that's the square root of 16 and 4 and 1 is 21. So I've got the lengths of the three sides here. I've got Vm is root 10, Vn is root 17, and Vm is root 21. And then put down the cosine rule. The cosine of the angle MVn will be, remember the cosine rule worked by this pairing, this combination here, two sides in the included angle. So it's square these two sides, it's the square of that plus the square of that minus the opposite one. But that's even easier because the square of that will just be 10. The square of that oops, will be 17. The square of that will be 21. Over two times the partner ones, that's the root 10, root 17. And notice what's going to happen with this cosine rule. 10 and 17 is 27. Take away 21 is 6. Cancel the 6 with that 2 and you've got a 3. Over root 10, root 17. Look familiar? Exactly the same as you had when you used the scalar product. So, same answer then, the angle MVN will be 76.7. It was allowed in the marking scheme, and so it should be, because it's a perfectly valid technique. There was no mention of using a scale drawing, though, in the marking scheme.